If you're a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're interested in getting more funding for your deals, regardless of what your banker would say, regardless of what your hard money lender would say, regardless of your credit, your experience, your verification of income, none of that matters in this world. Don't go anywhere because I'm getting ready to plug you into the funding for your deals. Well, welcome to the show. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. And this is your first time on the show or joining us here. I want to give you a very, very special welcome. Here on the show, we talk about all things real estate. Primarily, we talk about single family houses, but we also talk about commercial deals. And of course, even a bigger umbrella than that, we talk a lot about mindset because as you've heard me say in the past, until you own the real estate in between your ears, it's going to be very, very difficult to control the real estate that's out here. Well, we're celebrating this month our one-year anniversary of launching the podcast, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor, and we're on iTunes and Google Play and a couple of different YouTube channels. And regardless of where you're tuning in from, we would love for you to be a subscriber so you don't miss out on any content. Be sure to uh, subscribe, and if you're on iTunes, rate and review. We love to get your feedback. If you're watching one of our YouTube channels, just comment below in the uh, comment section any questions that you have, and we'll make sure that we get all of your questions answered. And we love to see who's tuning in as well from where. So, you know, type in your first name and your city and state right below if you're watching YouTube. We'd love to hear from you as well. Now, over the past year, I've had some very, very amazing guests and experts here on the show today. And today, of course, is no exception to that. I'm going to introduce him in just a second, but just a quick teaser. He's going to be talking with us about this uh, concept called the infinite banking concept, which he's going to show you how you can, what we call double dip on getting simultaneous income automatically. So that sounds pretty interesting. But before we do, I just made you a promise when we kicked off the show a moment ago, and that is how in the world am I going to plug you into the funding for your real estate deals, regardless of all that stuff I just talked about? Well, I've got a free on-demand class on the internet waiting for you to attend. You can go check it out when we finish the show. I'm going, if you're watching on one of the video versions, I'm going to post it right here on the video at www.jayconner.jay. C O N N E R dot com forward slash money podcast. And there you will learn the five quick and easy steps on how to never miss out on a deal because you did not have the money. Again, that's www.jayconner, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money podcast. Well, with that, I want to go ahead and jump right in to introducing our special guest today. My good friend, my colleague, we're in a high-end mastermind together. I've gotten to know him for the past year or so. His name is Chris Miles, and he's known as the cash flow expert and the anti-financial advisor. <clears throat> he's a leading authority teaching entrepreneurs and professionals how to quickly free up and create cash flow today, not tomorrow, by spending time doing what you'd love to do the most. Now, listen to that, folks. Chris shares and is going to share with us here on the show how to do what you love to do most by freeing up your time and creating massive cash flow. He's also an author, and he's the podcast host of his own show called The Chris Miles Money Show, which has been featured in U.S. News, CNN Money, EO Fire, and has got a proven reputation as well with his company, Money Ripples, which gets his clients fast, life-altering financial results. In fact, before I bring on Chris, I want to tell you this, and then we're going to bring Chris right here live on the show. In fact, Chris's personal clients have increased their cash flow, cash flow by over $100 million since he's been coaching his clients. So with that, my good friend, Chris Miles, welcome to the show, Chris. Hey, thanks, Jay. Glad to be on here. Glad to have you on, man. And I tell you, it's an honor to have you on, not only because you're a good friend of mine, but along with that, I know part of your story, Chris, at your ripe old age of 41 years old, you have already retired twice 
in your career or careers. You don't have to get out of bed unless you want to. You work when you want to. You've created the lifestyle that you want. And it's for those reasons that I wanted to have you come here on the show. So Chris, before we kick off talking about those things that you are passionate about, please share with my audience your story. What's your background story and what brought you to where you are today? You bet. I mean, definitely I like to wake up at the crack of noon, but uh, I usually wake up earlier than that, you know? <laughs> you know, I, I kind of started out on a weird path. I mean, one, I, I was never intending to do what I'm doing today, right? I mean, I was a sociology major in college. I was planning to become a business consultant. And, and I figured if I was going to be a business consultant, I should have real life business experience. And so back in the early 2000s, I actually got the opportunity to start my own business. And the one that was willing to bring me on was, was a financial firm, right? So I started out being the traditional mainstream financial advisor telling you to spend nothing, save everything, sacrifice, suffer, and just suck your entire life away, you know, just doing the same old routine, right? And you know, I did that for four years and really enjoyed teaching people about money, but it didn't take long before I started meeting friends of mine that were real estate investors and multi-millionaires even, and they completely rejected all of the advice I was given, right? I mean, they thought it was a joke. <laughs> so in 2006, you know, I kept trying to do it, but I, and, I, and I realized too, I, I, saw, I saw the evidence. People that had decades of financial advice from advisors weren't much better off than people that didn't have advice. And, and really, that advice hasn't worked today. I mean, there's baby boomers trying to retire right now that can't, or at least not retire the way they thought they would because everything's been over-promised and under-delivered. So March 2006, I remember I, I turned in my, my notice. I said, I'm done. I will never teach about money again. I will just go out and do mortgages and teach ballroom dancing. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a shift. That was a shift, yeah, for sure. I was actually one of the nation's top amateur ballroom dancers, so... I was going to go back that route again. I thought, you know, money were no issue. What would I do? I'm like, I'll teach bit. I'll teach ballroom dancing. So I was starting to do that. And then I, I shifted a little bit because even though I was going that path, everybody was asking me, hey, well, something's changing about you. And part of it is because I started to like really associate with these people that had made money, right? People that were self-made millionaires. And I started to adopt that philosophy more and more and the focus on cash flow versus just growing it and gambling it in mutual funds and things like that. And and the next thing I know, just, you know, not even intending, I actually was able to uh, be financially independent by July of that same year, 2006, just, you know, working a couple hours a week. And I thought, well, dang, that was easy, you know? And so because of that, people started to ask me, well, how'd you do it? Right. And so uh, even though I was able to be retired, I kind of just 2007, I came back out and I said, all right, I want to teach people how to do this. Now I went to do that, but unfortunately recession hit and everybody I was talking to were real estate investors. So they couldn't pay anything. I also was dumb enough to cut off streams of income right in 2007 thinking, oh, I'm doing my passion. So forget about those other cash flow streams, right? Um, which was the death, literally almost the death of me. I ended up going from millionaire to upside down millionaire during the recession in the whole $16,000 a month. And I had to dig back out without filing for bankruptcy. I, I still focused on trying to pay people back and get things back under control. And, and I'll tell you, that's the time I got most resourceful. That's the time I realized, hey, there's, there's cash hidden because I didn't have any savings. I didn't have any credit. There's nobody that was willing to give me any money. And I didn't even trust myself with money. You know? And uh, I was just trying to dig out of that hole. And so, so over the next the co course of the next few years or so, I was able to pay off over 900000 of that debt. And then start to build, build my way back. And then Three years ago, December of 2016, I was actually able to be financially independent once again, this time getting my cash flow up into the five figures a month. And especially because I have more kids, I have six kids of my own. And then my wife brought two kids from her previous marriage. So my lands, we got a blended family of 10. And so uh, a little bit higher numbers required, but you know, I'll tell you, it's, it's been awesome. Wow. Now let's go back to part of your story on when you, you know, so when you start out being a financial advisor, does that mean you were the tradition you were doing traditionally peddling stocks, peddling mutual funds, giving people advantage, financial advice under that umbrella? Exactly. Yep. I was doing the same old thing you've always heard about. Yeah. So what exactly were you doing? And I, so I know you went to teaching ballroom dancing 
And uh-huh. listen, folks, don't go anywhere because very shortly I'm going to pull the curtain back for Chris and he's going to tell us about this concept of infinite banking. But anyway, so what happened to where you got financially independent? Was that totally through teaching ballroom dancing? No, not at all. Actually, that one, that one was actually through more like affiliate type of opportunities or what people would call affiliate nowadays, right? You know, I was, it was interesting because I, I was doing mortgages at the same time. And I remember somebody asked me, he said, hey, do you like doing mortgages? And, 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 he, and then he asked me a different question. He said, if money were no issue, would you still keep doing it? What would you do with, spend your time doing? And I was like, well, that's where I'd probably do ballroom dancing. He's like, well, what about mortgages? And I said, well, I like teaching about the mortgages and helping them get the strategy and stuff that, you know, helping them kind of map it out. But I don't like to be the one doing all the paperwork and the underwriting and all that kind of stuff, right? And so he said, well, why don't you find somebody who does like doing that and partner with them? And it never occurred to me before because as a financial advisor, I was trying to be the do-it-yourself for everything, right? Anything that would make sure the revenue streams are all coming to me, I was trying to do that. And in an abundance mindset, you know, when you really start to think from a place of abundance versus scarcity, you start to realize, wait, there's more possible here. And so I did. I found a guy that actually wasn't great at bringing people in, but he was very good at doing his job and, and doing the paperwork and make sure people got good quality. And so I asked the guy, I said, hey, if I brought you people that are ready to just do the mortgage, but you help on the back end here, would you split 50-50 with me? And he said, yes. And I thought, well, dang, that's awesome. Because I was talking to him for maybe half an hour to an hour max. And then a month, month and a half later, I'd see a check come in the mail for over a thousand bucks. And I thought, I could do that again. Well, what, where else can I do that? And so I started like referring out just to a few people, right? Just people I was always sending referrals to anyways, that I never thought I had permission to just say, hey, hey, should we partner on this deal? You know, and so I did that. And next thing I know, I was making about four to 5,000 a month just by referring a few people here and there, just very organically. It wasn't even a business. It was actually almost accidental how it happened. Because I was actually, because remember, I felt like I was out of integrity as a financial advisor, so I refused to do that again. But it's funny, people kept asking me financial questions. So I was like, okay, well, let me, let me connect you with other people that can do that kind of stuff or stuff that I don't want to do, right? And, and that's kind of how it developed. And the next thing I know, I'm like, wait a minute, I can actually help people out here and, and do this on a bigger scale. So you started doing what Henry Ford did, you know, a hundred years ago. Is it Henry Ford, Chris, that said he'd rather make 1% off the efforts of whatever it was, a hundred people or a hundred percent off of his own efforts? Well, if it wasn't him, it was probably Abraham Lincoln or something like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? I don't know who, who gets knows? credit. I, it sounds like him. So you just started, what you started doing was replacing yourself. Mm-hmm with the activities that you really didn't enjoy doing and focusing on what you were really passionate about and what you really enjoyed doing and what you were really good at, right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Just purely that way. And then I started bringing the, inc- the investments later, but I actually was able to retire completely without the other outside investments. Gotcha. Well, so now today you focus on uh, helping clients increase their cash flow, bring in passive income and that type of thing. So I know one topic you're very, very passionate about, we've already alluded to, and that's called the infinite banking concept. So I want us to hang out on that. First of all, how did you come across it? What in the world is it? And how can our audience take advantage of it and put it to use? You bet. I mean, this is something actually I was introduced to actually by the time I retired, right, by some of these guys that were millionaires. And they were telling me like, hey, this is a way to use it. And it's funny because they were leveraging like things like whole life insurance, which I had always taught as a financial advisor was a piece of crap, right? (laughs) That they were just low returning, you know, very unsexy type things to use. Uh, But they brought in a whole other concept of how you can essentially use this money like a savings account you know, and, and use it today versus, you know, doing stuff like I was teaching, like long-term savings for retirement, things like that. They're saying, no, you can do this, use this stuff now. Now I'll tell you this infinite banking, banking concept. I didn't create it. This has been around for years, right? And there's different people that teach it. Many will teach it. That's a long-term strategy. I teach as a very short-term strategy. And this is what it is. Essentially you create a tax-free supercharged savings account. 
tax-free supercharged savings account. All right. Exactly. I'm definitely going to put that in the show notes. All right. <laughs> yep. It's because really what we're doing is you see most people when they try to do the, the infinite banking concept from a traditional standpoint, and I'm talking about insurance agents that need the money, right? Cause that's their livelihood. Right. See me, I, I actually started doing this, you know, like much more seriously in the last couple of years because there was investors, friend, friends of mine saying, hey, my people, these other investors need to learn this strategy because it's awesome. It works for me. But nobody else teaches it quite like you or does it like you or designs it like you do. And so what I do is rather than people taking forever to try to build this cash, I cut down the insurance costs as low as possible. And then you're putting in all this extra cash, much like a Roth IRA. But get this, unlike a Roth IRA where you're capped at six or seven thousand dollars a year, I've got people that put in like three, four, five thousand a year. I've got people putting in a half million or more a year into these kind of plans that allows them to have access from day one. So they have access to the cash. So no more locking the money away for years and years like you do if you try to throw them in the IRAs and you have to self-direct it and everything else and go through all the hoops the government makes you jump through. I can make this just like a savings account where there's minimal cost, but it grows tax-free just like a Roth IRA, it comes out tax-free like a Roth IRA, and you can use the money without asking for permission from Uncle Sam, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. And it's also much more protected from creditors and lawsuits than it is if you have it in almost any other account other than like a 401k. So when someone's growing this cash, is it are these pre-tax dollars, after-tax dollars? Where's the money coming from, or does that really matter? Yeah, just like a Roth, it's with after-tax dollars. Then it grows tax-free and comes out tax-free. Gotcha. So, uh, yeah. Do you have, of course, you have, you know, you do one-on-one -on -one consultations and uh, with your clients and et cetera. But uh, do you have multiple strategies, or is there one main strategy on how to grow the money once it's in there? Yeah. So the key thing is here is that we want to make sure that the money's worked for us and creating leverage, right? I mean, that's, that's like our investors key word is leverage. You know, everything's about that. Uh, so to give you an example, I had a, a, a turnkey real estate provider. He reached out to me because he said, Hey, this guy sold me this policy. It was supposed to be this infinite banking policy, but it's been a really a piece of crap because it's hardly been growing. Right. In fact, he'd been putting in something like $6,000 a year. And this has been doing this for six years and he only had about 20 grand in it. So he's saying, I haven't even broke even on my cost yet, right? And I showed him how to do it differently, which is, hey, how do we reduce these costs, get a lot more cash in there? We can stuff in, right? Uh, by the way, there's no income limits. So even if you make more than you can that to qualify you to do a Roth, because if you make over 200,000 a year, you basically can't do a Roth, right? Well, this one, there is no income limit. So for him, he's like, this is perfect because now I know I can dump in this cash. He ended up dumping in 50 grand a year instead as his max. And he, even then he was debating about doing 100 grand a year. So that 50 grand he's putting in, the cool thing is about, you know, just under 40 grand of it is going right to cash in the first year, which is the most expensive year. The second year he puts in another 50 grand, it grows by about 45,000. And then the third year he puts in 50 grand, that grows by about 54,000. And so by the fifth year, he's already broken even on his costs and then some. So this insurance costs become negligible from the third year on. But here's the key. Here's what makes it work better than even doing a Roth. The key is that your money can be working in two places at the same time. So what I have people do is rather than letting it grow and compound like a lot of insurance people will teach you to do, what I'll do is I'll say, hey, let's get the money in and then we can funnel it right back out within the first month and go and invest it. Now here's the key is that you can withdraw the money just like a savings account like you would do anyways, right? Or we in instead do like this line of credit with the insurance company where we can borrow from the insurance company because they know the cash is already in there. They give you this private line of credit and that doesn't show up in your credit or anything like that. Private line of credit they give you and say it's like around 5% loan rate, right? So it's just like a HELOC. If you think about it this way, you get a HELOC in your home, you're willing to leverage that and create more cash flow, right? You're doing the same exact thing, but the difference between this and a HELOC is that this, this, this HELOC of sorts pays you, pays you tax-free dividends. So you're getting paid, you're getting paid dividends while at the same time you're also getting the money out to go and invest elsewhere. So now you have money growing in the in the cash savings, right? With the life insurance, and the money is paying you on these investments at the same exact time. So you're actually earning money in two places at the same time 
creating leverage, beating the interest rate, especially if you do it right and how you flow the money through, you can actually make a net of a roughly at least a 2 to 3% extra rate of return on top of whatever you've been doing on your investing. So if you're doing, even let's say it's like a lending deal and the lending deal is paying you, say it's 10% a year, right? If you're doing that lending deal paying you 10%, that means if you use this strategy, you're making an extra 2 or 3% or about 12 to 13% a year doing the same exact thing. Same thing you do with your savings account, but the difference with your savings account is it's, you know, you put it in there, it earns point nothing percent, and you get taxed on that point nothing percent, right? Where here we put it in, it's tax free, and it grows a lot better than that point nothing percent. And it has better liability protection against lawsuits and creditors. So you can have millions of dollars in these things, and in most states, if somebody sues you, they can't touch it at all. They can't even access the money. So you could be a millionaire, somebody sues you, they're gonna have to like try to you know, get you to sell your, your car or something. <laughs> but you still got your, your hundreds of thousands or millions sitting in this account. So this strategy you're talking about is not only a way to multiply your returns, not only a way to leverage your returns and, your, and an asset, but it also has built-in asset protection, right? That's right. I was saying this just replaced your savings account, but does it way better. Yeah, I can already tell I've got a large number of people in um, my listening and viewing audience that's going to want to continue the conversation with you for sure, Chris. So when we have talked offline before, I've recalled asking you in the past, Chris, well, Chris, what is it that you're really, really passionate about? Mm -hmm. And I recall you telling me in the past, it really all comes down to hope and freedom. Right. So let's, let's talk about hope and freedom. What, so you're, you're passionate about delivering people hope and freedom. Let's talk about how you do that. Yeah. So, I mean, in addition to what I do with like designing these kind of, you know, policies, or whatever, right. You know, I also work as a consultant and cause I, I'll tell you, every time I try to retire, people want to pull me right back out. Right. Right. <laughs> they always want to know, well, how'd you do it? You know, or, or how would I do it in my situation? And, uh, and that's the one thing I kind of have a unique gift for is that I'm really good at seeing the big picture and kind of strategizing to get the biggest bang for your buck, right? And so, uh, so yeah, I get people come to me all the time. And you know, I'll give you an example. I had a, actually an old client that came to me from, he was from like t- over 10 years ago. And he said, hey, Chris, I've been saving a lot, but I feel like I'm saving and saving, but I'm not getting anywhere. And this is a guy out in San Diego, you know, a good client of mine. And and I looked at the situation, I said, oh, crap. Yeah. Yeah, you're perfect. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're, you're the exact kind of person I help because he had, a, he had you know, only one investment property. He had an investment property in California. He had his own house. He was focusing for the next five plus years on paying down both mortgages. So after about five and a half years, give or take, he would have them both paid off. He'll free up 5000 a month in five years. But I looked at the situation. I said, you know what? That property you have in California is actually a very low return on equity. You would actually be better off selling that property. And let's do a cash out refinance of your home. So I'm telling him to do the opposite of everything he's done, right? He's been the right. same Dave Ramsey mentality. I'm like getting him away to actual freedom mentality, which is, hey, we can leverage what you already have. No extra dollars out of pocket, not even including the savings you have set on the sidelines. And that, that extra money right there, will even with a little higher mortgage payment, will still net you an extra $75,000 this year alone. Wow. Over 6,000 a month. His goal in five years was pay off two mortgages, create 5,000 a month. This year alone, 6,000 a month. And at the pace he was going, if he kept reinvesting that extra cash flow, he would get up over 10,000 a month. You know? Well, it, so, so Chris, you really are an expert and have a lot of experience in looking at someone's, I call it their, their universal picture or their global financial situation and looking at it and being able to advise how they can really maximize that from a cash flow perspective, right? Right. Exactly. It's all about how to maximize that cash flow, how to even find the resource to invest. Sometimes people don't realize, I mean, he didn't either. He didn't realize he had that. He was only thinking about the hundred thousand or so he had in his savings account. I'm like, yeah, you got money there. Yeah. You got some money in some life insurance you've built up over time, but Look at this. I'm like, these two properties alone, you weren't even looking here. You were looking to free up cash flow a whole nother way. We reversed this in a way that make with Dave Ramsey pee his pants, you know, reversed <laughs> this. 
<laughs> and we can create in the same period of time over double the cash flow with conservative type of returns. I was only showing a 10% return, right? We both know that we can make way better returns than 10%, but I wanted, oh, yeah. I wanted to under promise and over deliver, obviously. Exactly. Well, Chris, what's a good example of a good client of yours that, that you help? What do they look well, like? Yeah. I mean, it's funny because like from a financial standpoint, they vary. They, they, they could be business owners. They could be W2 employees. They usually do make at least hundred to 200,000 a year, at least, you know, they usually get paid well, but they're kind of at the point where they say, you know, I'm making good money, but I want that money to start to work for me now. Like I'm getting tired of just making good money, right? They might have built up some savings. They might have have equity in their home. They might have even paid off their home, right? You know, they, they've got they've got potential. They know that they have net worth, but that net worth isn't creating cash flow for them. And that's kind of the ideal person for sure is is uh, is figuring out like those people that just know intuitively. They don't know where exactly, but they know intuitively. They say, hey, there's there's probably something to be done here. I just don't know when or how I can make this work. Or how to make because nobody thinks like this. That's why I'm an anti financial advisor. <laughs> advisor to freak out doing this kind of stuff. Well, you know what's really cool about you, Chris, is, and, and I don't know how often I've had uh, friends and colleagues and business associates, in fact, recently ask me, say, Jay, who do you know that can help me with my overall financial situation that doesn't have a dog in the fight? And has got a conflict of interest by wanting to sell me, you know, <laughs> stocks and mutual funds. Yeah. And by them making a commission off what they sell me, they're going to quote unquote fix my problem. But whereas what you have, Chris, is you really, you don't have a built in conflict of interest. You're able actually right. to come to the table to someone, look at the total financial situation and, and give advice on how to really free them up to where they can have better cash flow and more freedom, right? Exactly. That's exactly it. I love it. I love it. So folks don't go anywhere because in just a moment, we're going to be giving information out on how you can uh, reach out to Chris, how you can connect with him and how he can make a big difference in your personal life from the uh, cash flow perspective. But before we get to that, one thing I've also heard you say in the past, Chris, is your definition of freedom. And I love it. What's your definition of freedom? Yeah, to so do what you want, when you want, with whom you want. I love it. I love That's it. Freedom to me. And there's another thing I've heard you say, Chris, and that is something about working for your money versus your money working for you. How does that go? Yeah. I mean, definitely the whole goal is to get your money working harder for you so you don't have to work so hard for money, right? I love it. And I love your definition of freedom to do what you want with whom you want when you want. I love it. So I tell you what, Chris, let's don't hold the audience back anymore. Let's go ahead and give out uh, how people can connect with you and continue the conversation and, uh, you know, connect with you for you to take a look at what they've got going on as to how you can like, you know, free them up and put some more cash flow in their pocket without having to go out and, you know, necessarily invest in anything else. So go ahead. How can folks connect with you? Yeah, they can do it one of a few ways. I mean, they can check out my website, moneyripples.com. That's M-O-N-E-Y-R-I-P-P-L-E-S.com. They can go check out. There's great blogs on there as well. I haven't written many for the last couple of years, but there's plenty of information on there, plus a free ebook too. Also, they can go to my podcast, The Chris Miles Money Show. You can find on iTunes or any other podcast app that you find out there. And they'll, and, or if you just want to reach out to me directly, you can just shoot me an email personally to Chris at moneyripples.com. I love it. Chris, thanks so much for sharing uh, your contact information. And we've only got about three minutes left in the show. I do want to go ahead and put right up here for, for the folks that are watching the video version of the show. I want to go ahead and put up your, uh, your website up here. So one more time, your website is www.what? Moneyripples.com. So spell that out. Yeah, M-O-N-E-Y. R-I-P-P-L-E-S dot com. Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, you mentioned a few minutes ago, Chris, you mentioned the phrase having an abundance mindset. Yeah. So can somebody be taught an abundance mindset that doesn't have one? Are we, are some people just born with an abundance mindset? Do you have any experience in helping somebody like open up their brain and stop thinking scarcity all the time. Cause I'll tell you, I, 
scarcity I was on Wikipedia under that definition, right there with my picture on it. So especially if you're a financial advisor, I mean, they're basically born in scarcity. But uh, no, I'll tell you, the abundance mindset, scarcity mindset, nobody's 100% born with it. it. It really is a learned thing, you know. Uh, naturally, we all have scarcity tendencies as well as abundance tendencies, you know. Um, the key is, is how to identify those abundance type of those, that abundance mentality and, and switch to it. And, it. and it really does come from a place of understanding some basic core philosophies, things like there's no such thing as either or. It's how can I have both, right? It's, uh, you know, it's about valuing people over valuing things, you know, realizing that money and, and prosperity is not a result of luck or exploiting somebody or screwing someone over, as somebody might say, right? But it's really about how do you go about creating the most value for people in a way that money is just a natural byproduct. And I'll tell you, oh, when wow. I was starting to learn that in 2006, that was a big shift for me because, you know, I really started focusing on, well, how can I create value for people? How can I solve problems or serve people in a way that I'm creating a win-win? You know, and that's where the whole affiliate connecting people with other people thing, that actually became very natural for me because I want people to have the best. I want them to meet the best people or whatever. And I never thought I could monetize that. And so when I started to monetize it almost accidentally, Right. That's when it just blew my mind of, wow, I'm actually going about creating value. It was way easier to make money doing that than trying to figure out, well, how can I get people to just give me money? Right. I get people just to want to invest with me or things like that, you know, and it was really about a service mindset, you know, and, and realizing that there's that things are limitless, that there's open, there's really this open, free freedom that's allowed, but you have to have that responsibility, you know, to have that real freedom. And, you have to be willing to serve people and, and do what's right. And naturally, the results will follow, you know, and I'll tell you, I mean, we can go on forever about that. But that abundance mentality, if you do not have it, even if you have the game plan to get you strategically to be out of the rat race, without an abundance mentality, you will never feel free. You will always feel broke. You will be that person that's like the broke multimillionaire who says, I just don't have enough. You know, and that's that saver mentality. The saver mentality says, I can never have enough. I can never pay off debt fast enough. It's just never enough. And, and abundance mentality has to be there. Well, for our listeners and viewers uh, that feel that they may be, still be in a scarcity world or living in a mindset of scarcity, what suggestion do you have for them to start moving away from that? What actionable steps can they take to like get out of that mindset? Well, listen to your show for one. <laughs> you know, that's a good start. I mean, really, and I'm serious because I mean, filling your your mind with with good voices, right? People that are in abundance really helps. I mean, that's the big thing I try to teach on my show as well is that it's it's who you surround yourself with, and even if you're surrounded by a bunch of broke people, right? And I don't mean broke financially; I mean broke mentally, like they're just scarcity driven. You can still put other voices in your head, whether you're listening to this on your in your car or you're watching this on YouTube or whatever you're doing, you know, there are ways to get out of that by filling your head with other voices, you know, other people's voices, and then adopting it for yourself, speaking that abundance, speaking that truth. And you'll find that it really works. It'll, it'll create a whole new life. And in fact, that's why people kept coming to me in 2006 saying, you've seen different. What's going on? What are you doing? What do you want? You know, like <laughs> that kind of thing. And you know, people wanted to know. They didn't know what I was teaching. They just knew that something was different about me, and that drew them to me, and that created much better conversations. I love it. So with that in mind, one more time, Chris, give out to everybody the name of your show, your podcast, because I believe, you know, like attracts like. I don't know who in the world came up with the with phrase opposites attract. I mean, I like hanging around people that's like me, you know, or at least I want to hang around people that I want to be like if I'm not like them yet. So how do people find your show and what's the name of your show? Yeah, my name, my show is the Chris Miles Money Show. So right? lots of years figured out that name. <laughs> right, I got it. I love it, Chris. Well, I tell you what, you are a breath of fresh air, Chris. I'm so thankful to have you on the show. And thank you so much for taking the time, man. It's been just a pleasure to have you. As always, I appreciate it, Jay. All right, Chris. Well, look, everybody, thank you for tuning in. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show. Bye for now.